Welcome, I'm Darren, and I'll be your guide today as I look at the best card designs, the best individual card designs, in 1990-91 Skybox Basketball. And I wanted to do this because the whole concept of Skybox is, it, it's really cool where if you can get it right, it's amazing. You get rid of the background and you just showcase the player, the action of the player, which in basketball is a really important component to how basketball cards work. But if it doesn't work well, it, it can it can really cause a lot of problems. And so I've already done a worst of where I've looked at cards that just didn't work out very well. Here I wanted to look at when the card set, the card designs really did hit their height. And it's it's really fun to look through these, but it does beg the question for most of you coming in, which is, okay, where am I going to have Michael Jordan? And I'm glad that you asked because I'm kicking it off with Michael Jordan. Now the Jordan card is great, it really is. It's kind of the ideal card in terms of presenting the whole concept of Skybox. But it's like it was done on a spreadsheet or Mad Libs. They sat down, they ran the mathematics, and they came up with, okay, this is a great card. The problem is, it doesn't take advantage of what Skybox really brings. Now it's Michael Jordan, so we all are going to celebrate this card, we can't wait to see him, and it's a showcase of him. And that's kind of what it is. It is this wonderful curtain backdrop behind him that looks great, but it doesn't work with the dynamism of the card at all. So it is just a celebration of Michael Jordan. And that's fine. I mean, you really don't need to do anything with Michael. This is, this is perfectly sufficient. It's just that they, they saved all of the, the great opportunities for other cards. It's kind of like in the early days of Hollywood, where they invented sound and they invented colorization for, uh, for films, but that was expensive. So they only used that money on movies that needed a lot of help. The stars of Hollywood, they were silent for a long time, and Mickey Mouse was very famously black and white for a long period of time because he didn't need to earn his own tickets. Just his being on screen was enough, and then they spent the money on other things. And that's kind of the way the set worked. The Michael Jordan card is great fanfare for Michael Jordan, it just doesn't use any of the opportunity that the other card designs used, which is great for all the other cards. And so there are a lot of great cards to look at, this one is nice, but it's not fun. That's the difference. This isn't fun. And the backgrounds that they're able to use for cards like Clyde Drexler are exactly that. They're a lot of fun. So with Clyde, they have the big swoosh that they use in a lot of these cards. And the swoosh, one of the big advantages that it has is it looks at the motion of basketball movements, or the motion of the basketball itself during things like slam dunks. And so with Glide, you get to see where that ball's going, and you know that when he jams it, that's gonna be something. And so you get the energy of him in the air of what's about to happen. So it's just the, the pause before when he slams it home. But the swoosh can also be used in other ways, like his teammate Jerome Kersey, where in this case, you see the motion the ball has been making. Now whether the ball has or has not been making it, it doesn't matter. The swoosh in one case can be used to show what's about to happen. In another case, you can feel the motion is happening based on the swoosh. So they look great, and the cards really do look gorgeous. So it's fun to see the different ways that they play around with these effects. And here you have two cards that are basically the same card that are treated in different ways that have different results, but it's all a lot of fun. It looks really great. And which one would I prefer? I really don't know. The Glide card is a lot more dynamic because of the colors, the brightness, but the Jerome Kersey card is a lot more dynamic in terms of the action, the way everything's engaged. They're both great. But the, the background doesn't have to be used for the, the energy of the card. It doesn't have to enunciate the card. And the Magic Johnson card is a great example of that because in this case, you know, Magic's a legend just like with Michael Jordan. So the question is, okay, what's the magic card gonna look like? And here we get him, here's magic. And it's a celebration of him being, you know, magic. Now he is moving, there is dynamism to what he's doing. He's, he's dribbling around somebody or he's starting to make some sort of a drive. So it's really cool what he's doing. You get the angle that he has, etc. He's well lit. But then there's the, the weird bullseye design that they have for their background, which doesn't really make sense in basketball because if it was baseball, okay, that would be the effect of the ball hitting the bat or the ball hitting the glove. That makes sense. It's the drop in the water and the ripples of the water. 
in the case of basketball, the ball is always moving. It doesn't really stop unless somebody's catching a pass, but that doesn't make sense for being excited about the game. So the bullseye doesn't really have much of a, a job to do, but in this case, it doesn't need to because magic is the whole point of the card. He is literally the whole point of the card. And you feel the, the presence of my magic on the card. And then the colors are basically team colors as a backdrop somewhere behind. In fact, the way that the card is, the colors fade away so that by the time that you get to the other side of magic, it's almost all black. So it feels like magic is the transition between the bright team colors and the void behind. In fact, he's almost lit by not the background, but by the basketball. The brightness of the lighting creates a great dynamic to where he and the basketball are the whole point of the card and the colors are a backdrop that don't really do anything, which makes it a whole lot better. So this is a great example of a card that the effect basically is, it, it's almost moot and it makes the card better because of that. So it's a really great example, but when the background can work with the image, it's phenomenal. Great example. Sean Kemp. Now, in the case of Sean Kemp here, this is, you know, he, they're both going vertical. That's the whole point. You want to feel the verticality and you do. And then the background is really highlighting it. It's enunciating it so that you feel the height and the, the narrowness of the action. But while, while that's great and is a big celebration, one thing you might not notice is they're not centered on the card. They're actually shifted over a bit. And that's, that's a, a great strength to the card because now here he is shooting the ball across the card. That's the key. So you get the space of where the ball's going to go and it's not something you think about because the lines shift you over to where you're centered on the side of the card, but you're also aware of the, or you are affected by the rest of the card. So they're able to play a trick, but really getting that verticality is great. But it can be used in other ways too, like with John Hot Rod Williams. So in this case, he and Ron Harper, are, you know, Ron Harper's trying to block his shot. He's up there trying to make his shot and they create kind of an A-frame effect. And the A-frame effect actually adds a lot to the card because now you get this void be between them and beneath them that is, co it corresponds with these vertical lines where the blue vertical line is the one that is in that space. So you can really see that the space is there, but the color fades as it heads toward the top. And so your eye follows that fade upward into the rafters where they're playing. And so you feel they're a little bit higher up as a result and you feel that all, all that space, the way that it all works is a really cool element to the dynamism of them being angled across from each other. And so it's a lot of fun, but there are other ways that you can use the verticality too, like with Sean Elliott. And in the case of Sean Elliott, this one is so much fun and there's a lot going on. So you have Sean and his defender and they're both going up and they're going up for rebound or Sean's trying to shoot over the player, whatever it is, who knows? They're just little faint elements in this card. And there's this backboard that they, backboards are rare in these cards. Usually they have a backboard because like in this case, Sean's hand disappears behind the backboard. So you can't get rid of it because it won't make sense. But because the backboard is there, it changes the way that the card works, where it's not really like a backboard, it's almost like rafters high up in the, up by the ceiling. And so it, you feel like they're really high up there, up in this space that they're not supposed to be in. And then you have the glowing basketball and the way that the effect of the background works, it's like it's being, it, it's like heaven is shining down from the, the rafters in this, in the stadium. And then it just disappears in this massive void between them, which just makes them feel even higher up. And it's, it's gorgeous. And the, the way that the, it's almost a religious appearance, the way that the light shines down from the basketball or from whatever. And the problem that this card has is if there's any card that they should have made a poster of, it's this one. The detailing in this is perfect, perfect for a poster. And I wish that they had done it. They didn't, which is fine, but it means that the scale is off. There's too much going on in this card. It's a remarkable card. It's just that the Sean Kemp card, it is well balanced. The scale is balanced. The, the brightness is balanced. Everything works well. So the Kemp card is the one that you think of. The Elliott card is the one you don't think of. 
which is fine, but the, it's fun to see the different ways that they can use the verticality in these cards. They all do different things, but they're all using some similar components. But that's getting back to that swoosh with the Patrick Ewing card here, he's doing the same thing that the trailblazers had been doing. It's just that the difference here with uh, Patrick Ewing is that he is, he's coming in for a dunk and there's a static quality to him and you're feeling not what's about to happen, but something slightly beyond. Like there's a slight gap that's about to happen before the event happens. And that's the distance that he is back from the hoop. You don't feel like he's doing a windmill jam from way out where he's at. No, he's coming in for it. And like the famous Michael Jordan poster where he's coming way across this poster and he's here and this is the direction of the hoop, that same tension is in this card. On top of that, you look at how the fade works, the, the power of the fade starts at the hoop and gets even stronger afterwards. So you get the feeling like when he comes in and finally gets there and finally dunks that ball, oh, it's on, it's happening. And I love the power that comes through it. But if you wanna talk about power, you need to talk about the Kurt Rambis card. Now this, this is energy, this is emotion, this is power. And he's not doing anything, he's standing there. But you can tell that he's pretty fired up. Oh man, this guy's fired up. Now, did he just slam the ball and come down and catch the ball and that's, that's what he's engaged in? Did he just steal the ball? Did he just get called for a foul and he's either doesn't agree with it or yeah, that foul was, was deserved? Whatever it is, you know that he's there and he is fired up. I look at that card and I go, I don't wanna be on that court. Right now, that is not a court I wanna be on or even on the sidelines of. I, this guy is engaged. And it's magnificent. But part of what makes it really work is the fact that while yes, the colors in the background are like a halo around him just firing up the intensity, the basketball, they always have streaks on the basketball. And so here you feel like he just brought that ball in. And that, that whole <clears throat> quality, it's great. It's really great. It is just showing the sheer power, the sheer energy and excitement and emotional explosions that are a part of the game. And it's just, he doesn't even have to be doing anything. And the card does a great job of doing the same thing the Michael Jordan card did, but where Jordan was in action, here he's not. And so the card's doing a great job of just pausing with him. I love it, I really love this card. But boy, when you can get some actual active energy on the card, Hey, I'm all for it. And Nate McMillan, really, this card brings it. Now here, you'll notice they're using the bullseye effect again, but it works in this card, even with the energy, because it that has absolutely nothing to do with the energy. It's all about that hoop, or more specifically, the floating hoop. Now the floating hoop is a weird tradition that they have where they like to get rid of the background and the backboard. And so that means the hoop is not attached to anything. And sometimes it can look weird, but in this case, you know that that hoop is attached to, it doesn't matter what it's attached to, it ain't moving. And because there's no backboard, the all you are focused on is the motion of the net. And that net is flying, which means that ball just went through like crazy. And that's the power of it, the energy of that hoop. The net of the hoop is just phenomenal. And then the basketball's off on the side and you see that explosion of color. And basically it's almost like a, like a delayed reaction where it happened up at the hoop, but now is when the sound is finally coming to you and hitting you. And the, the power of it is, I, I absolutely love it. And I feel, I absolutely feel like he could totally hang on that rim that's attached to, it doesn't matter. Again, whatever it's attached to, it's attached really firmly. So gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous card. And I really should have this higher up on the list, but for me, this is my controversial card where I transitioned to Reggie Miller. And the reason is because I just, I love this card and I shouldn't, I'm not supposed to. There's no reason for me to, and yet I really do. So it has him dunking and it has the swoosh, but the swoosh has nothing to do with the dunk. He's actually going vertically to dunk. And so the swoosh is kind of pointless, but you'll notice there's also a counter point on the swoosh, which create, it takes all the tension and it diffuses it, 
but it doesn't really stop it. Instead, it pulls it back in and kind of centers everything around him in coming up for the dunk. And so it's highlighting him. And yet, very few people, I imagine very few people have noticed that you actually can't see Reggie. Interestingly enough, you can't see his face. You can see some little pieces, but it looks to me more like Kevin Johnson than it looks Reggie Miller. And so here is a card, an image of a card that's a big celebration of him in action, and yet you can't even see him, which is super funny. But the reason that you can't see his face is really because of the vantage point, because you're actually way below him looking up at him. Everything is right above you. And in fact, if you look at the background, you'll notice that the background is kind of a big war of elements that create this swirling, the swirling space that is, it just kind of heightens what's above you, almost like it's up in the heavens. And the combination means that he is basically towering above you, dunking the ball with the rafters above you. Just, it makes you it feel like you're under the action. That's kind of the thing, which just makes it really, really cool. An extremely distinctive card and one that can kind of sneak up on you. Sometimes you see it, sometimes you don't. For me, I, I really do love it. And it is that, that thing where sometimes I figure out why, other times I don't, but every time I look at this card, every time I look at this card, I do love it. I really do love it. But there's no question to me about the top two. And these cards are perfect, perfect skybox cards. Starting at number two with Kevin Johnson. Now for me, this is the perfect encapsulation of everything right about skybox. To me, if you were to distill down what is Skybox, what is it in its perfect state, here it is with Kevin Johnson. Here he is with a background that doesn't even do anything. It's like a halo around him. So it's all about focusing in on him. No distractions. And he's down low, driving around a player. You're not worried about what his feet are attached to because whatever, whatever's underneath his feet, he's got perfect grip. He's going for it. And he ain't stopping because he's falling over. He's committed. So you've got all that working, beautiful colors, all combined, great energy, good centering. Everything about this card works beautifully, especially the black, the dark areas around the outside that really enunciate the, the spotlight right in the middle of the card. So to me, this is the perfect Skybox card with one exception. While this does everything perfectly, there's one card that doesn't do any of that. And it's more successful, in my opinion, which is David Robinson. And the David Robinson card, you got to start off with the fact that it really, the all of the colorful elements, it's stuffed over in the corners. It's out of the way. And everything is a dark central area in between. And in that dark area is David, and he's not doing anything. He's static. Not static in the same way as Kurt Rambis. He's actually doing something, but he's not really engaged in anything yet. He's about to make a serious move and you can feel he's squared his shoulder and he's going into Patrick Ewing, Sir Chuck, somebody is, he's about to earn his stripes against somebody. It's about to really happen. And it's a really dark card. I mean, he's actually very, very poorly lit, which to me really heightens the whole power of, of him in this card. And the only way I can describe this is there was an offensive guard on the Chicago Bears named Kyle Long who was asked about his position. And the way he described it was, it's like a fight in a phone booth, which perfectly describes a, uh, an offensive guard in football, but also here in a low post power move. That's really what's going on here. It's the best description to me. It's a, it's a fight in a phone booth and he's about to go into it. But the thing that really makes this work the best is coupled with the stripes, the angle of the stripes is you got the stripes of the ball. So the ball, you can see the motion the ball is in or is going into, but you'll also notice something else up on his shoulder. There's also a stripe up there, which means that he has a little bit of motion too. So they're really emphasizing he's about to go low into the post and really earn what he's about to do. And we consider this to be his rookie card. So yeah, technically he had the hoops card from the year before, but to us, this was the rookie card. And when you look at this card, all you can think is that's how he's starting. This guy's going to be awesome. I can't wait to see this career. That's the, that's the height of it. He did this card does everything right because it's got all the emotion. It's got all the power. This, this is skybox emotion. It is, it is a perfect card 
and it doesn't do any of the things that any of the other cards do. I think that it's a perfect counterpoint to the Michael Jordan card. This, I don't think anything got better because instead of using all the vibrance of the life, this just said, nope, we're just focusing on, in on the spirit of this, this card. So to me, this is the height. And that's, that's what I've got for this list. So definitely let me know what you think about, about my selections, about the cards I hadn't talked about. If there was some card that did some of the things that, that I talked about that a lot better, definitely let me know. Um, check out my other videos if you haven't subscribed already. Do check out the other Skybox video if you haven't had a chance. And um, yeah, thank you very much for watching.